When it comes to aerodynamics, the Ford Raptor is naturally at a disadvantage because it is a pickup truck. But despite that, it is surprisingly aerodynamic still. More aerodynamic than it should be, really. Why? To find out, we did an aerodynamic simulation of one, it's rolling at 45 miles per hour. This plane shows that, as expected, there is a lot of flow separation behind the cab and behind the bed. Bruh, bruh, bruh. But now we get to some impressive parts. Over the roof, the flow is completely attached, which is a little surprising considering just how blunt the front of the Raptor is. Usually you'd expect the flow to deflect much more and separate, thereby increasing the drag, but it doesn't. Also, under the car, the flow stays attached very nicely, which again, is surprising not only because the front is blunt, but because the underbody isn't that smooth either. What's more, there is no diffuser on this car, so it is missing one major element that usually greatly reduces the drag, but still, the rear wake isn't as bad as you might expect. Looking at the very edge of the right side, we get more insight into why the wake isn't that bad. We can see that over the side of the truck, the flow is mostly attached and moving quite fast. Often, the A-pillar is a major drag producer, but here, we can see that its effects aren't that bad. However, behind the front wheel, we do get quite a large wake which tells us that the wheels are producing a lot of drag, which is to be expected. I wanted to see just how segregated the flow in the bed was to the rest of the flow. So I put two different types of streamlines. The ones in the bed are white, while the ones outside are not. We can see that the white streamlines in the bed just continually recirculate around and are very separate from the rest of the flow. One thing that could be improved is if we look at the front left, we see a streamline that goes over the hood, then swings around to the side of the car. That is usually going to increase the wake around the sides of the car and the drag. So if this bit of flow were better directed, then the car would have even better aerodynamics. Other than that, so far, the aerodynamicists have done a phenomenal job with it. Looking from on top, we see that the wake isn't that bad for such a large car. The flow in the bed is also chaotic, with many vortices forming as you'd expect. The flow separates around the cab, which is partly due to those streamlines flipping to around the side as we saw earlier. In this video, we see the vortices being shut off the car. It is very clear that the front wheels are not very aerodynamic here. That is partly because they are very exposed, because this is a utility car, and partly because there are no wheel spoilers, which would have helped deflect the flow and reduce the wake. As expected, at the rear of the cab, there are so many vortices, but here too, we see that the A-pillar isn't creating that much vorticity, which is great. So what does this drag coefficient come out to be? It is 0.53, which may not seem that great compared to modern sedans and fastbacks. But remember that this is a pickup truck and its styling is very fixed. So to get the drag coefficient down to just 0.53 is really good. I'm impressed. 